Welcome to this edition of Eighth and I'll tell you how I got better. I'm glad to be here. But a mission to deliver it. Well, I think that we're, we're talking, we're going to talk about everybody's. Arkansas is the second highest prescriber. Welcome to AFMC TV. I'm Robin Ledbetter. Thank you for joining us. Today I have with me Rebecca Denniston. She is a PA at the Dermatology Group of Arkansas. Rebecca, yes. thanks for being here. Yes, thanks for having me. So we're talking about skin cancer today. And I want to first start, what should you should PCPs know about skin cancer? If they have a patient that comes in and has a questionable spot, what, what should they know? Yes, well, I think so PCPs first and foremost do a great job of really um, catching things that are suspicious early. You know, maybe somebody somebody comes in and they complain of a spot that's been bleeding or not healing, um, or it's something that's changed. Those are all red flags, and I think PCPs do a good job of addressing those. Um, the biggest thing with skin cancer is if it's detected early, it's very treatable. So the earlier that you have it biopsied, have it treated, the better things are gonna be. So. And what are the common types of skin cancer that you see? Yeah, we see, so most commonly, basal cell and squamous cell skin cancers. And those are just caused from cumulative sun exposure throughout your life. So the bad sunburns you had as a kid, everything kind of adds up and later on they come out as that. And then thirdly, melanoma, um, I'd say less common, but the most aggressive. So that's um, the one that we really are on the lookout for, for sure. Have you seen changes in the last 10 years in those? Um, I would say it has become more common. I think, in my opinion, I think it's really attributed to tanning beds. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago, that was a really um, common thing that people did and tanning beds increase your risk of melanoma by 70%. So wow. that's a huge number. And so we're seeing melanoma in younger people, um, you know, as early as 20. I mean, you can, can really get it early on. And I think a large part of that is tanning beds. So tanning beds are a no under all circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No matter what kind. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And there, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, well, it's got UVB rays instead of UVA. I mean, they're both UVA and UVB are, are bad, but in particular, UVA rays cause more early signs of aging. And, um, you know, we always say no tan is a safe tan. Um, so, yeah, I'm mean, definitely everyone I think is on the same page in dermatology and, in, you know, general practitioners that tanning beds are just not safe. Mm -hmm. And you see this in the eyes as well, eyes, nails. I mean, so yeah. all, all of our skin That's right. is, is able That's to, right. to have skin cancer. That's right. I mean, you can get it anywhere. I mean, places the sun doesn't shine, you can definitely get, you know, melanoma, especially. Um, eyes, you can get it behind the eye. And so anyone at risk for melanoma or if they've had melanoma, we always recommend yearly eye exams. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can you can get it in the nails. You can get it, um, you know, in between the toes, the bottom of the feet, the scalp, you know, everywhere that doesn't necessarily have to be a sun exposed spot to get it. And that's some place that a, like a general practitioner might not be looking at. That's right. And I, I feel like really most general practitioners do a good job. But but really being thorough is checking the whole scalp in between the toes, you know, the bottom of the feet, the groin, you know, all places that maybe they just don't have time to look at. And family history is important as well. It is, it is. I mean, you know, skin type is one big factor. You know, if you're more fair skinned, you're gonna be at greater risk, redhead, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. But then family history is big too. You can have uh, familial atypical mole syndromes that can be kind of passed down um, generationally. Uh, and then of course, you know, if, if you have a parent or a grandparent with melanoma, it can put you at greater risk for melanoma. And there is now PCR testing. Tell us what that is. Yes, yeah, so that's been kind of in the last 10, 15 years. We can take uh, melanoma, so once it's diagnosed, we can take that tissue and send it through, through a PCR gene testing. It's a specialty test. And it tells us the likelihood of metastasis or um, it's a, or it's, uh, 
reoccurrence in the next five years of that specific melanoma. And so that's kind of a newer way to um, just give us more information. And a lot of surgeons kind of like that tool because it can help them decide whether or not to check lymph nodes. So that's become a larger part of dermatology as well. That's a game changer. It kind yeah. of is. I mean, it's just, you know, more information. I think all of that's going to progress mm -hmm. in the future as well. So. And has treatments for melanoma changed as well? Not, no. I mean, the guidelines on treatment are pretty much the same. Um, I think, um, gosh, probably for the past 10 years, I mean, things are, are pretty, um, they haven't really changed as far as like, you know, having them cut out the margin around the area that's cut out and then the lymph nodes, that's all pretty much the same. Has prevention changed? I mean, are there evasive treatments now that, that help? Yes, I think so. Well, number one, I think awareness is a big thing and people are more aware of sun exposure, even like younger patients, um, you know, there's not as much tanning bed use. They're really doing, you know, sunscreen, sun protection, you know, shirts, hats, all that. Um, as far as preventative treatments, Retin-A or tretinoin has become a huge thing, even in younger patients. I mean, I've got young patients who see it on, you know, TikTok and all mm -hmm. kinds of things coming in asking for it, but it, it truly works. I mean, it increases cell turnover to where you're making new cells faster, you're getting rid of older ones faster. And so um, it helps with sun damage overall. And, and so that's kind of an easy thing that patients can do. And then you kind of get into more aggressive treatments. Um, chemical peels can be used uh, to treat precancerous lesions. Um, and then there's some topical treatments as well that we'll do too. I think you know, social media is a good in that way. I, I, yes. I see it all the time where right. influencers share their regime, you know, what they do for their skin. And I've even right. been, you know, susceptible to take and go buy those yes. products and <laughs> see. Right. So I get yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. 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 I think so. so are you seeing a lot of chemical peel treatments? You mentioned that um, they, you can do different things to treat them. Yes, so it's not um, superficial peels. There's really no data in the literature that those help with precancer spots. What we're talking about is more of the medium depth peels. So it's it's called a TCA peel or trichloroacetic acid. There's a lot of information in the literature that that treats precancerous lesions. And even some insurances will cover that. They don't, you know, come back and say, oh, it's cosmetic because there's actually, you know, medical literature on it. And so um, someone who has a lot of precancerous lesions, we do a lot of faces, necks, chest, but also tops of heads and males. Believe it or not, chemical peels can do a great job to kind of cover a large surface area to improve that. Interesting. So you mentioned a little bit about PCPs and what you want them to know. Um, should they be biopsying in their office or is that something they need to refer to? I think that's a great question. I don't think there's anything wrong with biopsying in the office, but I do think there's a lot of benefit to having a dermatopathologist read the biopsy. And so sometimes um, if a primary care doctor does a biopsy, it just goes to a general pathologist and we have an in-house dermatopathologist and, and every dermatology practice uses a dermatopathologist, but they're really specializing in reading only the skin. And so I think there's a lot of benefit to that. So a baseline check's important. Um, what age should that happen? You know, that's, that's a good question. There's not a set age, but I think really in your 30s on up having a baseline check is important uh, just kind of to establish and see you know do you have atypical moles you know how the number of moles you have but if there's something that's concerning before age 30 you, you don't want to hesitate to come in i mean that's definitely something that we can check and um you know family history goes into that too um, you know, if mom or dad had melanoma and you've got a lot of moles, then by all means, you want to come in and have those checked. Well, thank you for this information. Yes, um, yes. A lot of great information that's important for the healthcare community, but for right. the general public as well. Yes, oh, for sure, for sure. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much yes, for being here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And that's it for AFMC TV. I'm Robin Ledbetter. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.